Bible verse. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is so glad to see each and every one of you here this morning. Welcome to Horizon. I'm Erica Allen. I'm one of the pastors here. And um, last week I started the message by saying that there is nowhere else I wanted to be on the first Sunday of the new year. It was a new week, a new decade. There was nowhere else I wanted to be than right here at Horizon. And what a good week we had last week, right? Our band was awesome. Thank you to Camille for her awesome leadership and for the people who give up a lot of their Sunday morning to be here to practice and prepare to help lead us in worship. Thank you to the band for what they do week in and week out. We're so very grateful for you. Last week we had over 45 children check in to Horizon Kids. So kids age zero to fifth grade, we had over 45 kids check in to um, Horizon Kids. Isn't that awesome? Jana still works here and is excited about about it after that. Um, so we had um, even more than that who choose to worship here with us, and we are so grateful for each kid who chooses to be in here for worship with us each week. And we are beginning to see more and more teens come to be a part of this worship or to help volunteer in our Horizon Kids ministry or make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or find other ways to serve. And so this year in 2020, if Horizon will just take some time over the next month or so, we're really praying about what our next step in ministry looks like to be in ministry with teens um, and the, that in between and teenage. And so if you'll just if you'll just be praying with me about what our next steps for ministry looks like as we continue to see those kids connect to our church and find ways to serve and to plug in, um, we want to find ways to serve them and make sure they're plugging in, right? So um, will y'all do that for me this week? Will you pray about what um, a future ministry looks like here for um, those teens that already call themselves our Horizon Teens? We're great grateful for you. So if you're here this morning, we're grateful for you. I'm just so excited about what God is doing. We also announced last week um, that in, a, in two weeks, um, we will give our complete and total final offering that we gave to BT Washington Elementary School on Christmas Eve. Every cent we collected went back out into the community to school BT Washington Elementary School into their scholarship fund for field trips. And so we were able to collect just over $4,000. I think we said we collected a enough for 267 field trips. Yes, that's awesome. Um, and I'll just be really honest with you all. Uh, for a long time in my heart, my hope, my dream is to be a part of a church that's really impacting the community, that's actually shining light and igniting change. And I could not be more proud to be the pastor of people who are generous with their money. At Christmas, when things sometimes are tight, you all gave and you gave generously to make sure 267 kids at BT Washington get to go home and they don't, get to ask, they don't have to ask their mom to work overtime so she can pay for a field trip. They get to go home and tell their mom about the world that they experienced through a field trip because of your generosity. And if that's not a way to celebrate that Jesus comes into our world and calls us to shine light and ignite change, I don't know what he is. I am so very grateful to be a part of this church. So thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing um, your, your, your whole hearts, your whole lives to this mission and ministry. And I am so grateful and excited about what God is doing here right now and what God is going to do in 2020. So thank you invite all your friends to be a part um, because we're just really excited about what is happening. We're continuing our series this morning, Made for This. So we're taking some time right now at the beginning of the year to figure out who is it that God made us to be? What is it that God is asking us to do every day because of who God created us to be? And how can we really live into that in 2020? So we're living as a person that God wants us to be, shining light and igniting change and not getting all caught up and hung up in the other things that we can, can sometimes be, get, get caught up in, and be a part of. Um, it, when I was studying for the message this week about belonging, I remembered a time in my own life. I had just finished um, most of my sophomore year in college, and I was home on spring break. And I had not quite decided exactly what it is I was going to major in or exactly what phase of life, like what exactly was next in life. Anybody remember sitting on that stage of life before? And so when I came home, my mom's best friend was a kindergarten teacher. I was pretty sure that I was going to be a teacher. I just wasn't sure exactly what age group I was going to teach. And so my mom's like, well, my best friend, Miss Small, she teaches kindergarten. Why don't you intern or shadow with her? 
here for a day on spring break. And so on a Tuesday, I got up bright and early. I went to a kindergarten classroom, and I spent the day interning, shadowing, helping out in the classroom. And um, I'm just going to, spoiler alert here, I'm going to talk a little bit about that experience in a minute, but I did not become a kindergarten teacher because I got home at 2.30, and I immediately took a shower because kids are kind of gross. And I was like, I felt disgusting. So I took a shower, and I got in the bed at 3.30, and I did not wake up until 6.30 the next morning. I have never been so tired in my life. And I got up and I told my mom, I was like, there is no way I can do that for 30 years. <laughs> so for those of you who have got up and poured your life into kids who are kindergarten or first grade or second grade every day of your life, thank you for what you do. That is not an easy job. Um, but this is what I remember about interning that day in that classroom. Um, because she had some extra help that day. We did a little more complicated project that morning. She had the kids lay down on paper, and we traced their life-size selves, and then they got the sheet of paper, and they got to take it to different parts of the classroom, and they got to write on their, their person. They've, like, outlined their body, and they're writing on it, like, this is what I love. This is what I want to be when I grow up. This is my favorite color. This is something special about me. This is my hero or my role model. And so I'm watching these kids like create their, you know, just tell us more about themselves by writing it out on these life size paper drawings of themselves that they have done. And so I'm watching them do this. And there's one young woman who it's about 1 30 in the afternoon. I've watched her all day work really hard to just fit in and be a part of the group, you know. And I, I watch her start to, to write her favorite color. And she writes blue like proudly across the top of the page, page like across you know, where she was supposed to write blue on this life-size drawing of herself. And then I watch her look over to her friend beside her, who's, who's written yellow on his, and she scratches out blue and she writes yellow as her favorite color. And then I watch her look over and there's a girl and she's like, actually, I, I don't want to be best friends with that boy, right? I, I want this girl to be my friend. And so she marks it out and this girl's written purple as her favorite color and she writes purple as her favorite color. And then I watch her write proudly that her hero is Dolly Parton. I'm like, you go, girl. That's my, I love that woman. She started Imagination Library, making sure that, like, kids read. I, I love Dolly Parton. And she marks out Dolly Parton when she looks over and sees the band that the boy next to her has written. And then she looks over and she sees the girl, and she's written Hannah Montana. So she writes Hannah Montana. That was back in the day when Hannah Montana was a big deal. Anybody remember those days? Uh, they were a long time ago. Now I'm telling my age. But she writes Hannah Montana, right? And I watch her keep doing this, right? The, for three or four different ones. And I finally look at her and I'm like, Lucy, Lucy, like, what are you doing? Like, this is about who you are, not who everybody else wants you to be. Like, what's your favorite color? Who's your favorite person? Who's your role model? Who's your hero? And she puts her hands on her hips and she looks at me. She said, Miss Little, because that was my name back then. She said, Miss Little, I've been here for a week and I know that I do not have time to worry about being who I need to be. I have, I have friends to make and I need to make my person matched them. And I was like, okay, it is 1.30 and I'm exhausted and I have no idea how to have this conversation with you. But I promise, Lucy, I, I think what we want in this project is for you to actually be who you are. And that's just kind of where we left it. I got distracted and was helping another student. But I've thought about that event so much since that moment. For the last 15 years, I've, I've thought about that young woman smudging out who it is she was so she could fit in. And I'll tell you why it stuck with me, because I've watched myself do that too. I've had this life-size drawing of myself, right? And I'm looking over everybody else's shoulder, trying to figure out who everybody else wants me to be, what everybody else wants or expects or thinks I should do. And I've smudged out everything I care about or think about. I've, I've smudged out what it is that God made me to be, to be what everybody else wants me to be. Anybody felt like that lately that you're just a smudged out life-size drawing that doesn't even know your favorite color anymore. I'm here to tell you this morning, you were made to be you. And you belong to God for being you. So bring your favorite color. If it's fuchsia, bring it. God likes that color. If you've got brokenness and shame, it's okay to, to not hide from it and smudge it out and figure out how not to, to ever, ever deal with it, right? Right? Because we have a God who wants us to belong. And I wish I would have been able to tell 
that kindergartner that day, that six-year-old who her teacher told me later that was her fourth move. It's March, y'all. It's kindergarten. It's her first year. She's been in four schools. She'd been there a week. But she knew a truth we all know way too well, right? That what I wanted her to do was to belong. I wanted her to be who she was because that's how we actually belong. We bring all of who we are, our favorite colors, our favorite role models, our favorite heroes, even those things about ourselves that aren't very beautiful. The way we belong is we bring all of those to the table to each other, right? But she'd already figured out what a six-year-old should never have to figure out, and that is it's easier to fit in than it is to belong. And I think there's a lot of us who are a little older than that, who spent a lifetime learning that lesson really hard, that it's a lot easier to fit in than it is to belong. And I'm here to tell you this morning, we were made to belong. God created us, formed us, that we may belong. We were not made just to fit in. It's easy. It's the easier thing to do. My 19-year-old naive self kind of knew that, but that six-year-old I wish I would have just taken a few more moments to really believe the pain that she brought that day when she looked at me and she said, I figured out how to fit in within a week of school. I figured out how to make everybody else like me because it's what I have to do to survive. It's what I have to do to not feel so lonely. And then what you do is you wind up with this smudged out, exhausted, desperate, hopeless life-size drawing that doesn't even know what your favorite color is anymore. So folks, I, I want to ask you, can 2020 be the year where we quit trying so hard to fit in and we actually take the time to belong? Can 2020 be the year when we quit trying so hard to fit in and we're actually who we were made to be? Can we actually start to belong? And the way we belong is by trusting first this truth, this truth that we all belong to God, period. No questions asked. We belong to God. Your brokenness, your shame, those things you don't want to talk about. God, Jesus says to you, bring those to me, you weary and heavy laden. Those of you who are dragging those heavy burdens around, bring them to, to me and lay them right here at my feet. You belong to me. Those don't, that doesn't belong to everybody else anymore. You don't need to hide them to fit in. You belong here to me. Your, those wild, crazy dreams, those longings, those doorways that, that Camille talked about earlier, those, those, those dreams in your heart that you have for this world and for these people, Jesus says, bring them here. Quit hiding from them. Quit worrying about fitting in and not, not having to answer to your failures or have people worry about or make fun of or scoff at those things that aren't working out. Don't, don't worry about trying to fit in by hiding those crazy dreams. Bring them here, you weary and heavy laden, because belonging to me is easy. It's easy. But if it was so easy, we would all do it all the time, right? It would be really easy. But he, he's talking about a different easy. He's talking about a light easy, right? Not an not a easy easy, but a, a light easy. That we can bring those heavy, hard things to Jesus. Jesus even wants them. And he says, you belong to me. But here's what happens. We don't stay there at the feet of Jesus just belonging to him because Jesus always sends us out to create more room and more space for more people to belong. Because I bet everybody in here right now while I'm talking can think about somebody who needs desperately to belong. Who spent all of 2019 trying to fit in. Who spent all of 2019 trying to hide things from everybody around them because it was easier than actually belonging to God or to anybody else. Folks, in 2020, I hope you can trust this. We belong to Christ, and you were made as you belong to Christ for that. You were made for that, but you were made to create a space for others to belong to. This week, I was drawn to Philippians chapter 2. Paul is a, a pastor. He's starting these new churches all over the world. He, he had this experience where he didn't fit in where he was, right? He was doing all these things to try to fit in. He was even killing people to, to make it all work, right? He was trying desperately to fit in, and it wasn't working. And, and God stopped him on the road, and he says, 
Paul, this isn't the way to do it anymore. You belong to me. Let go of all that stuff you keep doing to fit in. You belong to me. And it changed everything in his life. And he started telling people who felt like him, who'd spent way too long hiding all their hurt and shame, who'd spent way too long trying to figure out how to fit in with everybody else in, in this government that was, that was oppressing people and their jobs that weren't, weren't actually meeting these new and wild and crazy dreams that they had. All these people who were tired and desperate and wanted something different. He said, you weren't made for this. You were made to belong to a God where you can bring all of that stuff and create more space for belonging. We don't have to create who's in and who's out and all those things. What does it look like for you to belong to me, Paul, and to create, help create spaces where other people can belong? And so Paul took off on that journey. He became a pastor, and he started all these new churches where people believed in the power of Jesus Christ to help them belong. They, they brought what they had to Jesus, and they watched Jesus use it. They watched this movement of Jesus Christ, this grace that is only known to us through God, they watched it just change everything in, the, in their lives and in the world. They, they started watching people who didn't belong, widows and orphans, folks who were sick and wounded. They, they were watching all of these people belong somewhere because there was suddenly enough food. There was enough people to care for and dress those wounds that people may find healing it started this movement where people who didn't belong could belong because that's what Jesus does. He creates room in our life to, to have other people belong. But this is what happens so often, right? We start, we start down that path, right? And the reason that we, it's easier for us to fit in and to not belong is because fitting in doesn't require any hurt. Like we know that's safe. We figured that out. Some of us, after 35 years, we figured out it's easier to fit in and just throw that other stuff to the side. And the hard part is to belong. And these, these Philippians, these folks who've had this new church, who are doing all this awesome stuff for widows and orphans, encouraging one another, they were caring for one another, they had, they had found a place that they belonged. It didn't take long before they started doing things that hurt one another. And that's why it's so hard to belong. Because when you start to trust in Jesus to create you to be a person who creates space to belong, you open yourself up to the potential that you might be hurt. And I'm going to talk about this morning why I believe that we still need to work on belonging. Because here's the deal. I don't think Jesus' dream for our lives is to be hurt. I don't think Jesus came to earth to walk around as a human, died on a cross, and was rose again. I don't think he did that because he thought he was going to be hurt. I think he did that because he believed in the new day that, that God was creating. He believed that God would indeed use him to create space for all people to belong. And I believe God calls us to be those kinds of people through Jesus Christ. But the Philippians, have, have, they're, they're like, Paul, we don't know what to do anymore. And, and by this point, the Roman government has thrown Paul in jail because they're sick and tired of him starting this movement that where everybody is belonging and finding new hope and power. There's power in those movements, and it threatens things. Where where it threatens the systems that, that depend on there being an insider and an outsider, right? It, it threatens their system of people trying to fit in and work out and, you know, just fit into their system. So they're like, Paul, you got to go to prison. And so on the face, on his face, face down on the floor of a prison, Paul writes this letter to the Philippians. I, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to, to Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 11. I've um, added my own notes in yellow. Those are not the notes of Paul. But it says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if you have any encouragement, Philippians, from belonging to Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, any common sharing, any belonging, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind by belonging to each other, right? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of the others. If your relationship with one another, to belong to one another, if, if your relationships to one another, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Christ, Jesus, 
in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, hold on, I'm going to hold on one second. This right here is a song that the early church sang every single time that they gathered for worship. They sang what I'm about to say to you until they were hoarse because they knew something about it would help other people belong. Listen to what they said about Jesus. They had to remember who Jesus was so they could create a space for other people to belong. They said, who Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature Nature of God did not consider equality with God to be something used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, by being in human likeness, by being a human, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient, even to death on a cross. He was obedient even to death on a cross. That in, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That is the name of Jesus, that every knee shall, should, should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. They sang this until they were hoarse. This is how we create a space for people to belong, because they knew that they were made to belong and they were made to create a space to belong. And Paul said to them, if you forget, if you forget how to create a space for other people to belong, then we've got to go back to Jesus. He, the first thing he says is what? Have a mindset like Jesus. Think like Jesus. You were made to belong and you were made to create spaces where other folks can belong because that's what Jesus Christ has asked us to do as we belong to him. So to, to belong and to create a space for other people to belong, we have to start thinking like Jesus. What is it that's been running through your mind all week? Has it been the things that Jesus would think about? Has it been about other people? Has it been about how we can serve others? Has it been about those dreams of shining light and igniting change that God has for this world? Has it been about that new day? How much time have you spent thinking about that? If you want to create a space for others to belong. If you want to be a person who's actually belonging, we've got to change what we think about. We can't just think about ourselves and what it is that, that we need day in and day out. We have to start thinking like Jesus. We have to have a mindset like Christ. We have to spend some time praying and hearing from him, right? We have to think like Jesus, to belong and to create a space where other folks can belong. We were made for this. The world in 2020 needs this. We have to start thinking like Jesus, who didn't care about who was in or out, who didn't care about who could meet his needs, who didn't care about all those things. He thought about how to love others, right? He spent all his time thinking about how do I live out this crazy dream that God has for the world? What does it look like this week for you to think like that? What is that crazy dream God has for your life? Some of you know it. Pray about it. Figure it out. What is that crazy dream? And are you spending your time thinking about that or are you spending all week thinking about something else? This week, this very week, you're going to have a million opportunities to think about things other than what Jesus would want you to think about. I'm not saying don't go to work, don't go to your job. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that even as you do those things, how do you begin to think like Jesus? How do you begin to have a mind like Jesus as you encounter them. To belong and to create a space of belonging, we have to begin thinking like Jesus. And that means we've got to take some, some of that other noise and stuff. We've got to figure out how to turn it off and turn it down so we can begin to think like Jesus. To belong and to create room for other people to belong, we have to start acting like Jesus too. Paul says, act like Jesus. He said, be humble, right? Don't think you're better than anybody else. There's a reason why funerals are full when the person up front says about the person, this person treated the custodian at their workplace the same way they did the CEO. There's a reason why funerals like that are full. It's because they've been a person that's been really good at creating a space for other people to belong. What does it look like for you to act like Jesus this week? How are you treating everybody like they are a person worthy of love? How are we doing that this week? How are we acting like Jesus this week? Not acting like we are Jesus, not acting like we have it all figured out, but how do we begin to act like Jesus and care about and see and think about the people around us? 
to belong and to create a space of belonging this week, we are going to have to act like Jesus. Many of you do a really good job of not thinking you're better than anybody else, but what does it look like this week when you have a moment? Maybe it's in the grocery store line. Maybe it's on the road. Maybe it's, I don't know where it is, but what does it look like to act like Jesus this week and not think you're better than somebody else, not think you have all the right answers? What does it look like to just be a little humble this week and start to act like Jesus? To belong and to create a space where other folks belong, we also have to see like Jesus. That's what this, this hymn teaches us. These people said it out loud, right? Until they started to see like Jesus who came to be a human. He was God, right? God said, I can't exactly see the world the way these humans are experiencing the world. Maybe this crazy plan to begin to see the world the way they do will help me know how to redeem it and make it new. And so he sent Jesus who took that on and who began to see the world the way we see the world. What does it look like this week? to begin to look through the eyes of somebody else and begin to see the world maybe the way they see it. Some of you, you guys are already really good at this, right? You generously gave on Christmas because you thought about a single mom who's working three jobs at BT Washington Elementary. And you began to look through her eyes. Maybe some of you even saw your child coming home to ask you for money for a field trip. And you were like, that means I'm going to have to work overtime and spend less time with you. And you all said, you know what, I don't think Jesus would stand for that. And you gave money to make sure that's not a conversation that's happening too often in our community. What does it look like for us to continue to see people like Jesus sees them? To begin to see the world like Jesus sees them. To, to see people not as problems, not as people who are trying to create all this havoc in the world, but to see people who are desperately longing to belong somewhere. What does it look like for you to be a person who sees them? This week, I guarantee you, you're going to have an opportunity to invite somebody over to watch your kids ride bikes in the, in the yard, to have a cup of coffee, to have a drink, to have dinner. There's, there's going to be some time this week where you can see a neighbor who is desperate to belong and you can give them a space to belong. You have, you're going to have that opportunity this week. Will you create a space where you can belong, where you can bring who it is that you are have someone else bring it to. Is there a way that this week you can create a space where you give somebody else the opportunity to belong? And this is the fourth thing that got me all week. The way that we can help others belong is to begin to trust like Jesus. Did y'all hear that? That one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that this way that Jesus lived was truly the best way to live? Let me tell you something. Jesus came to this earth, and he lived life, and one of his best friends was named Judas, y'all. One of his very best friends who followed him all over the place, his name was Judas. And you know what he did? After three years of laughing with Jesus, crying with Jesus, working with Jesus, serving with Jesus, learning from Jesus, after three years of that, on one night, Judas turned him over for 12 shekels of silver for, for some money. He turned Jesus over to the authorities who crucified him, who killed him. For 12 shekels of silver, Jesus was betrayed. And I've thought all week, Jesus, you believe so much in belonging. Would you you do it again? Would you call Judas to be one of your best friends and one of your closest followers? Would you do it again? And this is what I heard all week. I heard Jesus say, I trusted in God's plan to make a new day. Did I come here to hurt? No. I was hoping that that's not what it would be like. But I hope so much in that new day that God talks about where everybody belongs, where there is is God's goodness of light and, and change and goodness just overflowing in the world. I believed so much in that that I gave everything I had to it, even if it meant that I got hurt in the process. That's what we're asked to do, to trust that that God is making a new day and belonging I, this is my prayer, that all of us create room for people to belong, that we become people who belong, right? And that somehow none of us experience hurt in the process. But that's not the promise. The promise is that one day the way of Jesus will be the only way. It will be the way when everybody will, will bow down and say, why didn't we do this from the beginning? Look how wonderful and amazing this is. Widows and orphans belong. People like me belong. All of us belong. And they have created room for others to belong. We were made for this. We were made to hope 
that there's a new day. And those things that are keeping you from belonging, that are, are forcing you to fit in, can you put them to the side? You weren't made to fit in. You were made to belong. And it doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy. But my hope, folks, is that we can all experience this new day, this new way of living in the world where God's goodness and mercy are known by each of us, where we begin to think like Jesus and our bosses think like Jesus and our friends think like Jesus and our spouses think like Jesus. But in the meantime, to create room to belong, we have to be people who think like Jesus. I want to tell you something, guys. You, it's going to be really hard to create a space of belonging for other people, which I think we were made to do. I think Horizon is being asked to be people who go home today and create room for other people to belong. I think people are desperate for it in our world. But this is the deal. We're going to have to be honest about what it means to belong to Jesus. Those things that you think are too dark and too hidden, that Jesus won't love you or Jesus won't let you live that dream out, nope, not at Jesus's, not at Jesus's feet. Bring those to Jesus. But trust this, folks, as God changes you to be a person who's creating room for other people to belong, this is what's going to happen. Those, some of those things in your life will be changed. Some of those heavy things that you've been carrying around that that's the reason other people can't experience belonging, as you bring them to Jesus and say, I want to belong to you. I want this new day. I want to work for the day where people believe that serving each other and loving each other is really the only way. I want to believe and trust in that. And Jesus says, quit carrying those heavy things and lay them right here. Quit hiding from them. Let's belong to each other and be honest about them. Find somebody this week who you can begin to belong to. Who are those people that you can bring those, those heavy and hard things so that you can begin to create a space for other people to belong? Because that's how we're going to be free. Folks, we don't sing these songs. I love that this, what we read was a hymn that's been read in churches for, for over 2,000 years. That as, as people gathered and, and followed Jesus, this stuff meant something to them. They sang something like, my hope is in Jesus until they were hoarse. Let's start being people who live like that, who worship like that. Let's start being people who belong. You were made to belong. And you were made to be people who create room. For others to belong. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you. We thank you that we belong to you and to each other. And for all of us in here that have a really hard time bringing some of those things to you, this morning we ask God for this to be the beginning of you helping us know what it means to really belong. We love you and we thank you for loving us. Amen.